Good morning. Good morning. Gemar Chatima Tova and Shabbat Shalom. For those who are unfamiliar with the phrase, Gemar Chatima Tova means may you be inscribed for good, as in inscribed in the book of life for good. Uh, we are going to open our service this morning with the dawning of the Talitot. So if uh, our gentlemen will please rise and join me for the Talitot. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to wrap ourselves in tzitzit. Amen. I want to welcome everyone this morning for our Bokhar Yom Kippur service, our morning service for Yom Kippur. Last night, uh, we had a phenomenal Kol Nidre service, the opening of Yom Kippur. Diane did a phenomenal job with Kol Nidre. I know the weather kept quite a few people away last night. We had a huge online audience uh, last night. So for those who may be joining us again this morning online, uh, good morning and Gamar Chatima to you guys as well. We are honored to be able to have the blessing of uh, providing our services online as well, uh, especially considering so many are unable to uh, get out and about at the moment with everything going on around us. Uh, you will notice normally Yom Kippur, we stand a lot, and unfortunately, you will be, and I won't be, uh, because my leg is still not <laughs> fully recovered from surgery. So uh, don't get offended if I'm sitting while you have to stand. It just is what it is this year. <laughs> Bauch hat zwar ein Eilo, hey, no, Melech Alam, Shechiano, Vigiamano, Vigiano, Lazaman, Hose. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us life, sustained us, and brought us to this happy season. Amen. From Psalm 19, we read, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your presence. Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. And if everyone will please rise as we begin this morning with the Matzovu. Matovu o halechon Yaakov Mishken oitecho Yisroel Matovu o halechon Yaakov Mishken oitecho Yisroel Matovu o halechon Yaakov Mishken oitecho Yisroel Vani how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. Amen. Ashreon shreve techon, odia haleluja seila. Ashreham shekahalo, Ashreham sharonai lohav. 
Happy are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Happy are the people that are so situated. Happy are the people whose God is Adonai. And with joy you shall draw forth waters from the fountains of salvation. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Baruch atu Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Asher natan lanu et derech wa Yeshua, Bemoshiach Yeshua, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, and Messiah Yeshua, Amen. Mi chamocham ba'elim Adonai Mi chamocham neda ba'kodesh Nora te'ilot ose Join me for the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echod Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Amen. But the Pharisees, when they heard that Yeshua had silenced the Sadducees, gathered together in one place, and testing him, one of them, a lawyer, asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the Torah? And Yeshua said to him, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments from Yeshua's words. In Matthew 22, we read, and everyone says, Amen, amen and Amen. If you'll join with me for the prayer of repentance, our Father and our, our King. King. 
as we remember all the mercies to us, we are mindful of our sins. You have been faithful, we have been faithless. So often we have lived self-centered lives. We have failed to love you with all our hearts, souls, and minds. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. As we begin Yom Kippur, we pray you would search out our innermost being and help us to give ourselves unreservedly to you. Do it for the sake of your name. Do it for the sake of your kingdom. Do it for the sake of your anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our Father, our King, be gracious to us and answer us. Though we have no merits, deal charitably and kindly with us and save us. Avino Malcheno, Choneno Valeno, Avino Malcheno, Choneno Valeno, Kien Bano Masi, Ose Mono. of what we will do for the Vino Malchenu is responsive, so if you would please follow along with Diane where it says congregation, and then we will all together uh, say where it says all together. Our Father, our King, we have sinned before you. Our Father, our King, we have no king but you. Our Father, our King, deal kindly with us for your name's sake. Our Father, our King, inaugurate upon us a good year. Our Father, our King, nullify all harsh decrees upon us. Our Father, our King, nullify the thoughts of those who hate us. Our Father, our King, thwart the counsel of our enemies. Our Father, our King, exterminate every foe and adversary from upon us. Our Father, our King, seal the mouths of our adversaries and accusers. Our Father, our King, exterminate pestilence, sword, famine, captivity, destruction, iniquity, and eradication from the members of your covenant. Our Father, our King, withhold the plague from your heritage. Our Father, our King, forgive and pardon all our iniquities. Our Father, our King, wipe away and remove our willful sins and errors from your sight. Our Father, our King, erase through your abundant compassion all records of our guilt. Our Father, our King, return us to you in perfect repentance. Our Father, our King, send complete recovery to the sick of your people. Our Father, our King, tear up the evil decree of our verdict. Our Father, our King, recall us with a favorable memory before you. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of good life. Our, our Father, our, our King, inscribe us in the book of redemption and salvation. 
Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of sustenance and support. Our, our Father, Father, our King, King inscribe us in the book, book of merits. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of forgiveness and pardon. Our, our Father, our King, make, make salvation sprout for, for us soon. Our, our Father, our, our King, raise high, high the, the pride, pride of Israel, Israel your, your people. people. Our Father, our King, raise high the pride of your anointed. Our Father, our King, fill our hands from your blessing. Our, our Father, our, our King, fill our storehouses with abundance. Our Father, our King, hear our voice, pity us, and have be compassionate to us. Our Father, our King, accept with compassion and favor our prayer. Our Father, our King, open the gates of heaven to our prayer. Our Father, our King, remember that we are but dust. Our Father, our King, may this moment be a moment of compassion and a time of favor before you. Our Father, our King, take pity upon us and upon our children and our infants. Our, our Father, Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were murdered for your holy name. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were slaughtered for your oneness. Our, our Father, our, our King, act for the sake of those who went into fire and water for the sanctification of your name. Our Father, our King, avenge before our eyes the spilled blood of your servants. Our Father, our King, act for your sake, if not for our sake. Our Father, our King, act for your sake and save us. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your abundant compassion. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your great, mighty, and awesome name that is proclaimed upon us. Our Father, our King, be gracious with us and answer us. Though we have no worthy deeds, treat us with charity and kindness and save us. Our Father, our King, may this hour reveal to us your mercy and your favor. Our Father, our King, we have sinned before you. Our Father, our King, inscribe us for blessing in the book of life. Our Father, our King, grant us a year of happiness. Our Father, our King, bestow upon us an abundance of your blessings. Our Father, our King, Cause every oppressor and reviler of men to vanish from our midst. Our Father, our King, cause us to return to you in perfect repentance. Our Father, our King, forgive and pardon our iniquities. Our Father, our King, may this hour reveal to us your mercy and your favor. Our Father, our King, be merciful and answer us. Though we can plead no merit, deal with us according to your loving kindness and help us. Amen.
Abrahamim, Father of mercies, we thank you, Lord, for inviting us in to your holies, for drawing us into your presence, for allowing us to encounter you face to face as a man speaks to a man. Father, we thank you for the great atonement that has been provided through the blood atonement of Messiah Yeshua, for your mercy and forgiveness, for your loving kindness that never ends. And Lord, we ask that on this Yom Kippur that you will draw our minds, our hearts, and our attention to anything in our lives that still needs to be submitted and humbled before you. B'shem Yeshua Meshachinu. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. If everyone will please rise. Avino avino shabbat shamayim yid kodesh yid kodesh shemchon tavo malchu chaye aser ratzon cham kiva shamayim kain barrens. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Adonai Svetati Ptach, Ufiagid Tehilotecha, Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. Mahoch atu Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov. 
האל הגדול הגיבור והנון רם אל עליון גומל חסדים טובים וקונה החוב אזרחי חסדי אבות ומביא גוי בני בניהם למען שמו באוהבו מלך עוזר ומושיע ומוגן ברוך עצו אדוני מוגן אברהם אמן Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, who bestows high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and makes the righteousness of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, Savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, the shield of Abraham. Amen. אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני, מחיי מתים אתה רב להושיע. מחכה חיים בחסד, מחיי מתים ברחמים רבים. סומך נופלים ורופאי חולים, ומתיר אסורים. ומקיים אמונתו לשנע עפר. מחמוך באור גבורות ומידו מלאך. מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע. ונאמן עצו לכל מתים ברוך עצו אדוני מחיה ומתים You, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace. Resurrect the dead with abundant mercy. Uphold the falling. Heal the sick. Set free those in bondage. And keep faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is mighty, master of mighty deeds. And who can compare to you, O King? Who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout. And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Amen. Becharzei Elze ve'emar, they were crying out to one another. Kadosh, 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 Adonai zevaot, Melon kol haaretz kevodo, Baruch evod Adonai mikamom. Holy, holy, holy is Adonai, Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Blessed be the glory of Adonai in this place. Amen. And if we can have a few of our adult-like individuals bring the chuppah down and have our children stand under the chuppah this morning as we say a blessing over them. Over our boys, if you'll extend your hands towards the children, over our boys we say, Yesimcha Elohim ke Ephraim ve ke Menashe. And over our girls, Yesimech Elohim ke Sarah, Rivka, Rachel ve Leah. Yivarecha chadonai vishamrecha. Yadonai panavelecha vichunecha. Yisadonai panavelecha ve yisemlecha shalom. May the Lord make you like Ephraim and Menashe. May the Lord make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And uh, Fabi, if you would come up to pray over the children. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessings that you bestowed upon us with each one of these children, the ones here and even the ones that are not here, that are home watching. Father, just I pray your blessings upon them. I pray your angels around them, protecting them, Father, at all times. 
And may your spirit guide them, Father, guide them to you, to walk in your ways, to love you, and to look to you all the days of their lives. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And Joel, if you would come to carry the Torah, and if somebody would relieve Joel of his post, literally. He been to a haron, ve o mer mo shame. Kuma Adonai, ve a futsu oin vecha, ve a nusu misa necha, mi ponechon. Ki mitzion te se tohara, ki mitzion te se tohara, urevar Adonai, mi rushalaim. Baruch Shenotan Torah Toharam Baruch Shenotan Torah Toharam Where more Israel began to shout Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Kadol Shemo Gadol Adonai Itzi Umero Memo Shemo Yachdav when the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from before you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Holy, one, one is our God, great is our Lord, holy is his name. Magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together.
as we have a special reading for Yom Kippur, uh, we will not be opening the Torah scroll this morning. Bahuranai Hamvora, Bahuranai Hamvoach Leolam Hoyen, 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 Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And today we have, as I said, a special reading uh, for Yom Kippur from Numbers 29, verses 7 through 11. In Hebrew we read, Uve asur lachodesh hashvi'i haze michrakodesh yiye lachem Ve'initem et nafshotechem kol milacha lo ta'asu. And in English? On the tenth day of the seventh month, you are to have a sacred assembly. You are to deny yourselves and do no work. You are to present to Adonai a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma, one young bull from the herd, one ram, and seven-year-old uh, seven male lambs without defect, along with their, their grain offerings of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an afa with the bull, two-tenths with the ram, and one-tenth with, with each of the seven lambs. Also, offer one male goat for a sin offering in addition to the sin offering for atonement as well as the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah, Amen. Okay, please rise. And if everyone will just pretend that the Torah is elevated as we say Vizo. Vizo ta Torah she samu she livne bnei Yisrael opi Adonai beyad Moshe. This is the Torah that Moses placed before the sons of Israel and the command of Adonai by the hand of Moses. Amen. And when it rested, Moses would say, Return, Adonai, to the tens of thousands of the families of Israel. Arise, Adonai, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, O Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Amen.
may be seated. If you would like to give to Congregation Maim Chaim, you can do so through several avenues. One is through the Sadaka box and envelopes in the back of the building, or you can give online at shlomeasternshore.com forward slash give through our Maim Chaim app or through good old-fashioned snail mail. Any of those work just fine. We do like to say a special blessing over our congregation with regards to the tithe and offering. Baruch Hatzoranai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvot Tzav Etzivanu, Lahav Tiachlanu, Laham Aser, Behatzorumah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who commanded us and made promises to us concerning the tithe and the offering. Avrahamim, Father of mercies, we worship you, Lord. We thank you for uh, this opportunity to gather together for the uh, chance to celebrate Yom Kippur as Mishpacha. Father, I pray that uh, as the tzedakah, the tithes and offerings are brought before you this morning, that it will be uh, a blessing to your name and a glory before you. Father, I pray that uh, you will continue to give not only resources and, and the ability to be able to uh, do what we need to as a congregation, but also so into ministries all around the world. Father, I pray that uh, all that comes in, you will give our leadership, wisdom, and knowledge as how best to use these resources and steward them for the good and glory of your purposes. B'Shem Yeshua Meshachinu. In the name of Yeshua our Messiah, we pray, and everyone says, Amen. Now, before we move on to the message, I do have two quick announcements to, uh, to relay. First and foremost is today after our service. We announced this last night. We are going to uh, start a new tradition here at Maim Chaim. This is something that is done in synagogues around the world on Yom Kippur. It is called a Yiskor service. We are going to do a modified Yiskor this afternoon uh, after our service. Uh, Yiskor is a, uh, an opportunity for us as community to remember those who have uh, gone on before us, our friends, our family, uh, etc. We will give opportunity for those that would like to to take a few moments and share a story or an anecdote about uh, somebody that you have lost, uh, your, you know, whether it be your parents, your siblings, children, whatever it may be. Um, we used to do this every single year at our synagogue in New York and absolutely loved it. It was one of the highlights of our ho High Holy Day season. It was one of the things that people really longed for each and every year. Um, we would spend about two hours as a congregation and you would have people that would tell stories and have people rolling in their chairs laughing. Uh, and then you'd have somebody get up and tell a story that had everybody bawling with you in, in, uh, in memory and mourning with you. Uh, and every emotion in between. But it was a phenomenal opportunity as community for us to come together and to mourn and remember, which is what you score means, remember together. Uh, and considering uh, the way that the last uh, almost two years now have gone uh, and how many... Uh, so many of us have lost just in the last few years. Um, I feel like it's a prime opportunity for us to be able to, uh, to move in this direction as a community. So we will do a modified you score after our uh, service this morning. Uh, the other is um, we are going to bring back officially today our congregational break fast. We didn't get to do it last year, uh, but we also didn't get to do a lot of stuff last year because of the hurricane and, and so much more. But we will be gathering this evening at Five Guys and Daphne for uh, break fast. Um, if you are uh, able and want to join us, please talk to Danielle so that we can give them a heads up rather than having 40 or 50 people roll through the door last minute. Uh, we'll give them a little bit of a heads up that we're coming through. Um, but uh, also, if you want to come and join and there's just food there, you know, they don't have food that you are able to eat, that is perfectly fine as well. Please bring something with you and join us and break fast together if you are able and willing. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and roll into the message this morning. Avrahamim, Father of mercies, we worship you, Lord. We thank you for... Uh, your Yom Kippur for your appointed days that you have set aside for us to be able to enter in to your presence and encounter you in a new and powerful way. 
Father, I pray that as we open your word today on this Yom Kippur, that you will speak boldly into our hearts and our lives, that you will open up our minds to receive and our ears to hear what you have to say. And Father, I pray that it be your word heard, your voice received, that nothing of me be involved except that which you have ordained specifically for this purpose. B'Shem Yeshua Meshachinu, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. So uh, when I was a kid, I, I think I was probably still maybe late elementary, early middle school, uh, I, I got in trouble. And for those of you that know me, I know that that may sound like a shocker. Um, I don't recall what exactly it was this particular instance that I got in trouble for, but whatever it was, I know it wasn't good. And I had kind of pushed my luck about as far as I could uh, this particular day with my mom. And you know you're in trouble when your mom says the glorious words because she's so mad at you that she can't deal with you. She says the glorious words, wait until your dad gets home. You know you're going to get in a lot of trouble. So when my dad got home, uh, my mom filled him in on whatever it was that I did at this particular instance uh, to get in trouble. She told him uh, she had been waiting for him to get home in order to handle the situation. And anytime she said, I need you to handle this, that was never a good thing. So my dad had uh, this belt back then, uh, way back in the day, and I'm pretty sure it's probably still haunting us somewhere, lingering around, lingering around in his closet. It was this big, thick, brown leather belt. Uh, he wore it all the time, but it was also the belt he would use to spank us. Now, before anyone gets uh, out of shape and twisted, this was back in the late 80s and early 90s when spanking your kids was still considered socially okay, and he never beat me with the belt, just a few licks to get my attention and to bring correction. Nonetheless, I had messed up, and, and the big guns had been called in. I knew what was coming. I knew the thick leather belt was coming off. I knew it was going to be doubled over, so it was more manageable in his hands, and I knew that once... This already said thick belt was then folded over again. It was going to be a much thicker surface across my hindquarters. I knew there, were, there would be a traditional celebratory cracking the belt together. You, you remember uh, if you ever got spanked by your, your parents, they would take the belt, fold it over, and crack it together. It was like just to get your nerves. You're not wired up. They got to get the nerves a little more, right? Uh, so I knew that this was coming and, and, and that it would prompt a little more fear and anxiety before the actual spanking occurred. So with all this in mind, my dad takes me to the, back to their bedroom and he proceeds to do everything aforementioned. At this point, as the belt is making the cracking sounds, I'm already hysterical. Uh, yet instead of telling me to lean over the bed, he begins to talk to me. He discusses my actions with me briefly, and while they were wrong, he uh, and why they were wrong. He he talks to me about the spanking that I deserve and why I deserve it. He talks to me about the correction he desires to see in my behavior. But instead of actually spanking me as he normally would have, he tells me that even though I deserve the punishment for my actions, he isn't going to spank me this particular time. Instead, as I'm already crying, he tells me he's going to hit the bed with the belt several times, and when he does, he wants me to yell out like it hurts, so that my mom thinks it did. I never actually uh, got the spanking. I was awarded some grace and mercy for that particular time, and I, to this day, have no clue if my mom ever uh, was in on it or ever knew that I didn't get the actual spanking, but what I do know is I deserve to get my tail handed to me. And instead, my dad forgave my actions and didn't punish me as I deserved. Have you ever experienced the relief of not getting what you knew good and well was coming to you? Maybe you caught the glorious flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror when you were running late to work and going 12 miles over the speed limit. And for whatever reason, the cop gave you a warning instead of a ticket. Maybe you missed a very important deadline at work and instead of getting in uh, huge trouble and getting fired over it, your bosses forgave you and actually pulled up their sleeves and sat down to work with you to get the project complete. Maybe you were supposed to do the dishes before your parents got home and you drug your feet uh, doing anything and everything else and when they got home, the kitchen was still trash and instead of punishing you, they gave you a little longer and let you take care of them right away. Maybe you're sitting here with a hundred different scenarios flashing through your head about how you were able to get out of getting what was rightly coming to you. And your life is so much better for it. This is the whole reality of Yom Kippur. Think about it. God gives Israel the Torah. 
And within the Torah is a very descriptive list of mitzvot or commandments to keep Israel on the right track, to keep us holy and righteous before the Lord. The Lord tells Israel, if you walk faithfully in these instructions of the covenant that I am giving you, then I will protect and care for you. He even gives us a detailed list in Deuteronomy that we call the blessings and curses, which we've talked about the last several weeks in our Shabbat service, specifically for the purpose of telling us how well things would go if we are faithful and how bad things can get if we aren't. But then we come to Leviticus 16, and in Leviticus 16, we get a very detailed description of the Yom Kippur tabernacle service through which the high priest, as an intermediary, would make atonement for Israel's sins once a year by entering the Holy of Holies to sprinkle the blood of goats and bulls on the cover of the Ron Habrit, the Ark of the Covenant, what is known as the Mercy Seat. I believe there is a great spiritual principle found in the premise of Yom Kippur that we need to fully appreciate and fully take to heart. And this principle is, because of the blood atonement, we do not get what we deserve, but instead we receive compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. Because of the blood atonement, we do not get what we deserve, but instead we receive compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. So let's dig into the word a little bit together, if you don't mind. Leviticus 16, verse 29 is what we're going to be looking at to begin with. Leviticus 16, verse 29 it is to be a statue to you forever that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you are to afflict your souls and do no kind of work, both the native born and the outsider dwelling among you. It, for on this day, atonement will be made for you to cleanse you from all your sins. You will be clean before Adonai. It is a Shabbat of solemn rest to you, and you are to afflict your souls. It is a statute forever. The Kohen who was anointed and who was consecrated to be Kohen in his father's place will make the atonement and put on the linen garments, the holy garments. He is to make atonement for the holy sanctuary, for the tent of meeting, for the altar, for the Kohanim, and for all the people of the assembly. This will be an everlasting statute for you to make atonement for B'nai Israel once in the year because of all their sins. It was done as Adonai commanded Moses. See, verse 33 is very interesting, especially once you take into full account the totality, the magnitude of the high priest's duties on Yom Kippur. Because of the fact that the high priest was only allowed to enter the Holy of Holies one day a year, it is often presumed that he only actually went in it once in that day. But when we read the totality of Leviticus 16 in context, what we realize is that the high priest was responsible for entering behind the curtain into the Holy of Holies several times. On Yom Kippur. We see in verses 11 through 14 that the high priest had to slaughter a bull for a sin offering for himself and for the priesthood. He had to enter behind the curtain into the Holy of Holies to make atonement for himself. Then in verse 15, he is to go to make atonement for the nation of Israel. Then in verse 16, he is to enter and make atonement for the holy place because of Israel's sin. Then also in verse 16, he is to go in again to make atonement for the tent of meetings or the tabernacle itself because it dwells with Israel even in the midst of their sin. Altogether, the high priest enters the Holy of Holies four times every Yom Kippur to make atonement. And each time he has to take off his regular priestly garments. He has to go through a mikvah, or a cleansing, a ritual cleansing, the immersion. He has to put on the special linen garments. Then he has to grab his incense pan and stick it in the curtain and put incense on it, creating a smoke that would envelop the room and serve as a barrier between himself and the Shekhinah and the Holy of Holies. Then after all of that is done and after all, after he has sprinkled the blood on the horns of the altar and performed the remainder of the sacrifices and procedures, he would then take the scapegoat and place his hands upon its head and proclaim the dewey or confessions of the sins of Israel over the goat. And they would send the goat out in the wilderness to symbolically carry off the sins of Israel away from the camps of the nation. All of this was on top of the regular sacrifices and offerings that had to be made on any given day in the tabernacle. And on Yom Kippur, only the high priest was allowed to perform all of these tabernacle services. And no one but him was allowed into the tabernacle until all was done and atonement was made for everyone. So again, we read Leviticus 16, verses 32 through 34. The Kohen is anointed. Uh, the Kohen who is anointed and who is consecrated to be Kohen, 
and his father's place will make the atonement and put on the linen garments, the holy garments. He is to make atonement for the holy sanctuary, for the tent of meeting, for the altar, for the Kohanim, and for the people of the assembly. This will be an everlasting statute for you to make atonement for B'nai Israel once in the year because of all their sins. It was done as Adonai commanded Moses. The only way Israel could be cleansed from their sins was by the annual sacrificial service performed by the high priest. This particularly pertains to the blood atonement brought on Yom Kippur. In fact, immediately following this detailed description of the priestly duties of Yom Kippur, we read in Leviticus 17, beginning with verse 10, Anyone from the house of Israel or from the outsiders dwelling among them who eats any kind of blood, I will set my face against that soul, the one who eats blood, and will, uh, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes atonement because of the life. Therefore, I, say, I have said to B'nai Israel, no person among you may eat blood nor may any outsider dwelling among you eat blood. The blood atonement is key. Not the scapegoat, although it is a big part of the process. Not the ritualistic service of the priesthood itself, although it is a part of the process. Not the carcasses burning on the altar, although it too is a part of the process. Not even the priest bathing in the mikvah or changing his clothes over and over again, although each of these are part of the process. Not even the vidui or confessions of sin, although it is an important part of the process. The key of this process of atonement on Yom Kippur is the very specifically mentioned blood atonement. Again, our principle. Because of the blood atonement, we do not get what we deserve. But instead, we receive compassion and forgiveness. But you may find yourself asking, what does Judaism do now if blood atonement can't be made in the temple? being there's no temple and no priesthood standing today. Well, aside from the longing of our Jewish world for the reestablishment of the temple and the priesthood, Judaism, since the destruction of the temple by the Romans in 70 Common Era, has wrestled with this very reality. And the conclusion that the general consensus uh, has, has come to or have arrived at uh, is that in place of the sacrificial proceedings of Yom Kippur, we atone for our sins through prayer and particularly liturgy. And our confession of our sins, as we do with the Al-Khait and the Ashamnu, uh, we atone for our sins through the study of Scripture. We atone for our sins through doing good deeds and giving to charity and so on. But Leviticus 17.11 is very specific, is it not? It says, For the life of the creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes atonement because of the life. Thankfully, even though the temple no longer stands, Hashem had a far greater plan in store, one for which the temple service stood as a foreshadowing. We may not have an earthly high priest performing the rituals on Yom Kippur any longer, but we do have a far greater high priest who made atonement for our sins in the Holy of Holies in heaven, the tabernacle not made by human hands, and that the earthly Mishkan was simply modeled after. In Hebrews 8, beginning with verse 1, we read, Now here is the, the main point being said. We do have such a Kohen Gadol who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. He is a priestly attendant of the holies in the true tent, which Adonai set up, not man. For every Kohen Gadol is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. So it is necessary for this one also to, offer some, to, to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would have not been the Kohen at all, since there are those who offer gifts according to the Torah. They offer sacrifice, uh, I'm sorry, service and a replica and foreshadower of the heavenlies, one that is just as Moses was instructed by God when he was about to complete the tabernacle. For he says, see that you make everything according to the, the design that was shown to you on the mountain. But now Yeshua was obtain, has obtained a more excellent ministry insofar as he is the mediator and a much, of a much better covenant which has been enacted on better promises. Yeshua HaMashiach has become our intermediary. He has become our great high priest in the order of Malchizedek. 
He has sprinkled his own blood, the blood of the spotless lamb, slayed for our sins upon the true mercy seat, the very throne of God, to atone for our sins once and for all. Hebrews 9, verse 11, continues this thought about Yeshua as the high priest. But when Messiah appeared as Kohen Gadol, as a high priest of the good things that have now come, passing through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, he entered into the holies once for all, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of, the, of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Remember, Leviticus 17 says that only blood can make atonement for our sins. We are not able to haphazardly change the word of God to fit our circumstances. The temple no longer stands because it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 common era. It has been gone for almost 2,000 years now. And Judaism has been flying by the seat of our pants ever since with regards to Yom Kippur. And atonement, because of my Jewish people's eyes as a whole, have not been open to the reality of Yeshua's promised Messiah yet. But the truth is, he did offer his life for our sins. He did pour out his blood on the mercy seat for our forgiveness. Josephus' writings even corroborate some of the gospel message of what occurred when Yeshua died, particularly in the ripping of the curtain in the Holy of Holies. He states that every time a new curtain would be installed until the temple was destroyed, the ground would quake and the curtain would rip all over again, and it caused great terror and torment in Israel. Yeshua provided a better covenant, a better sacrifice, not one made by man for man, but rather one made by God for man. A true blood atonement, one that the former had only been a shadow foreshadowing of, an atonement that was once for all and eternal, not needing to be offered year after year all over again. The punishment due us for our sins is the reality of eternal death. Yet Hashem has provided a far greater way through the blood atonement of Messiah. When we call upon the name of Yeshua for our salvation and repent of our sins, our sins are forgiven. And the curse of the law, which is death, do us for breaking the law is washed clean. Because of the blood atonement, we do not get what we deserve. But instead, we receive compassion and mercy and forgiveness. To this end, John 1 verse 8 says, If we say we have no sin... We are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an inter intercessor with the Father, the righteous Messiah Yeshua. He is the atonement for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for the whole world. Yeshua paid the ultimate sacrifice so that you and I would not have to suffer for all eternity. He paid the ultimate sacrifice to restore us and make us sons and daughters of the King of Kings. We no longer need the blood of goats and bulls because they were but a foreshadowing of something far greater, the final atonement and the blood of Messiah Yeshua. The fact is, you and I are sinners. We sinned long before we found Messiah, and sadly, as humans, we're going to continue to sin again. But because of the blood atonement of Messiah, our sins are forgiven, and the eternal punishment due us is forgiven. As 1 John 1, verse 9 states again, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And chapter 2, verse 2 of 1 John, he is the atonement for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also the whole world. Odds are, each and every one of you can think of scenarios pretty quickly in which you were able to get out of serious trouble and were shown great favor and mercy. But how much more mercy and forgiveness have you been shown by Messiah Yeshua? 
Yom Kippur may be a solemn occasion and a time of repentance, but it is also a time for you as followers of Messiah Yeshua to rejoice in the true atonement you have been provided by the blood of the Lamb. If you are listening to this sermon today and you have not yet put your trust in Yeshua, you have not cried out upon his name for forgiveness and salvation, then today is the ideal day to do so. This Yom Kippur is the perfect opportunity to receive full and true atonement found only in the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua HaMashiach, and for you to be washed clean of your sins and become an heir to the kingdom. If we can have our worship team make their way back up to the stage. I began this message talking about my dad not spanking me, even though I rightly deserved it. And truth be told, this is just one instance I'm aware of, but odds are there were probably countless times more that I deserved some sort of punishment, and my parents forgave me and said, and probably never mentioned anything about it. But how much more powerful a reality is the forgiveness and mercy found in the atonement of the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're going to spend a, a few moments in worship, and as we do, I want to encourage you to take this time to focus on the great miracle that has been provided in the atonement of Yeshua. Once and for all, sins have been redeemed. Once and for all, the sacrifice has been made. Once and for all, blood atonement that brings true atonement and salvation has been sprinkled on the mercy seat in the heavenly. And we are invited to receive freely and fully of his mercy and grace. As we worship, I want you to contemplate on the mercies and miracles that have been shown to you. Contemplate on his love and compassion. If you know there are areas in your life you still need to seek repent and, and repentance and restoration in, now is the time. If you've never accepted Yeshua as your Messiah and atonement, now is the time. There's no greater day than today. Whatever day that happens to be, whether it's on Yom Kippur or tomorrow or next week, there is no greater day than today because we have no day promised to us besides today. Do not let this Yom Kippur go by without finding true atonement, true forgiveness, and true salvation in Messiah Yeshua.
said that we could come into his presence without fear to the hall Please rise as we prepare to say the Achit. The Achit is a responsive as well, so if you'll just follow along where you see your parts. For the sin that we have sinned before you under duress and willingly, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through hardness of heart, for the sin that we have sinned before you without knowledge, and for the sin we have sinned before you with the utterance of the lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you in public or private, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through immorality. For the sin that we have sinned before you through harsh speech, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with knowledge and deceit. For the sin that we have sinned before you through inner thoughts, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through wronging a neighbor. For the sin that we have sinned before you through insincere confession, and for the sin that we have sinned before you in a session of vice. For the sin that we have sinned before you willfully and carelessly, and for the sin that we have sinned before you showing contempt for parents and teachers. For the sin that we have sinned before you by exercising power, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through desecration of the name. For the sin that we have sinned before you through foolish speech, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through impure lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you with the evil inclination, and for the sin that we have sinned before you against those who know and against those who do not. For, for all, all these, O oh God, God of forgiveness, forgive us, forgive us pardon, pardon us, and atone, atone for us. us. Come now, let, let us, us reason, reason together, together, says the Lord. Though, Though your sins, sins be as scarlet, they, they shall be white, white as, as snow. snow. For the sin that we have sinned before you by subservience through bribery, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through denial and false promises. For the, for the sin, sin that we have sinned before you through evil talk, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through scorning. For the sin that we have sinned before you in commercial dealings, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with food and drink. And for the, the sin, sin that we have sinned before you. Interest and extortion. And for the sin that we have sinned before you through haughtiness. For the sin that we have sinned before you with prying eyes, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with idle chatter of our lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you with haughty eyes, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with brazenness. For all these, O, o God, God of forgiveness, forgive us, forgive us pardon us, us, atone for us. For the sin that we have sinned before you in throwing off your yoke, and for the sin that we have sinned before you in judgment. For the sin that we have sinned before you through entrapping a neighbor, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through a begrudging eye. For the sin that we have sinned before you through lightheadedness, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with obstinacy. For the sin that we have sinned before you with legs that run to do evil, and for the sin that we have sinned before you by overt gossip. For the sin that we have sinned before you through vain, oh, through vain oath-taking, through baseless hatred. For the sin that we have sinned before you in the matter of extending a hand. And for the sin that we have sinned before you through confusion of the heart. For all, all these, O oh God, God of forgiveness, forgive, forgive us, us, pardon us, atone for us. us. Prayer of renewal. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Amen. If you are currently mourning the loss of a loved one or friend within the last year or would like to remain standing for the mourner's cottage, please uh, feel free to stay standing. If you would like to sit, please feel free to sit and keep those uh, who are standing in prayer as they go through this time of loss. Yikra vikra shemei raboam Be'ama divrach irutei ve'am lich malchutei Be'chai echonu ve'yom echonu ve'chai edecho be'it Yisrael Ba'agolam izman k'ri v'imru o'mein Ya'hei shemei rabo mevorach Le'olam o'mei o'maya yidborach Yidborach v'yishtabach v'yidpar v'yidroman v'yidnoase V'yidhadar v'yitalei v'yitalo shemei ruchu d'shabrichu the Elom in Kol Birchata Veshirata, Tush Birchata Venechamata, Da Miram Beama Vimru, O Main, Yahe Shlam Araba Min Shemaya, Vachaim Leveho Yisrael, Vimru, O Main, O Se Shalom Bimramav, Hu Ya Se Shalom Veho Yisrael, Vimru, O Main, O Main. Magnified and sanctified be his great name and the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he. Though he be high above all the blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are ever uttered in the world, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen, Amen. If you remain standing for, please rise again for the Elenu. Aleinu leshebech l'adon hakon L'atet gerula leyonsem bereshit Shevo asanu kegoye haratzont Velo samanu kemishpechot od omom Shevo samcha okenu kaen Vegor aleinu kechol hamonam Veanacht mukorim umishtachavim umom Livne Melech, Malche Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruchu, Shehuno Teshemaim, Beoser Arens, Umosha Vakar, Bashmaim, Mima, Ushkina Tuzo, Ushkina Tuzo, Begav Hemeumim, Hu Eloheinu. Malcheinu efezulato, kakantu betoranto, vedata hayom, vedata hayom, vehashevote eleva vecham, ki adonai hua elohim, bashamayim mimal, veal hadrens, veal hadrens. Mitachat en od en od V'nemar v'haya Adonai L'melech al kol ha'aretz B'yom ha'u, b'yom ha'u Yiyei Adonai echad 
It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portions like theirs and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the King of kings, the Holy One, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundations. And the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God. In the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. And as it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. Amen. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Yadonai p'nav elecha v'yichunecha Yisai Adonai p'nav elecha V'yasem lecha shalom 